Hola chicos, en este video vamos a hablar de las preguntas. Questions are super important for you to be able to ask and answer because that's what communication is all about. Giving information and receiving information, right? So, uh, what did you do last night? I went to the movies. Which theater did you go to? How was the movie? Who was in it? Was it funny? Etc. These are all ways that we can gather information or communicate with others. So, let's look at how to master it. You're going to follow along with your um, guided notes and you're going to want to fill these out as we go. You're more than likely going to need to pause the video and maybe rewatch a certain section. It might move a little fast for you and that's okay. That's why you have the video at your disposal to use as you see fit. So you're going to go at your rhythm, okay? Don't feel pressured to follow along if you don't understand something. Rewind it and watch it again, okay? So here we go. First we have dos tipos de preguntas. Our first tipo is sí o no. Y la segunda tipa, tipo perdón, es preguntas abiertas or open-ended questions. So what do we mean by that? Well, I, an example of a yes or no question might be, did you do your homework? An example of an open-ended question would be, where did you do your homework? When did you do your homework? Why did you do your homework? Etc. Okay? And these have some characteristics that we can use to identify. But those are the two main types of questions we're going to look at. And so as we look at our questions and we try and tackle answering them, we're going to ask ourselves these analysis questions. What type of question is it? There's only two, all right? And it will become really obvious which type it is. What should the word order look like? And we'll revisit that piece at the end, and it will make sense, okay? And then finally, who should be verbing? We always ask ourselves this whenever we talk about anything. So questions are no different. We really want to make sure the correct person is verbing, okay? So let's get started. We're going to look at si o no first, okay? So you've got some examples on your page. And what you might notice is that si o no questions always start with a verb. And then also another characteristic is that the answer can only be yes or no. Now you can elaborate. So did you do your homework? Yes, I did my homework. Or yes, I did my homework last night. Or yes, I did my homework last night after I fed the dog. Right? You can be as elaborate or unelaborate as you please. But the basis is that it's yes or no. So... Let's look at some examples. You've got these on your paper. What I would like you to do is see if you can identify the verb for me, okay? Okay, sorry, I had to cut the video for an interruption. Anyway, so you have your sentences here, your questions. They're all yes or no questions, and your job is to identify the verb. I would like you to highlight the verb. If you want to follow along with my color scheme, please use a yellow highlighter. Otherwise, use whatever color you want. I don't care. So you might notice that we have comes, habla, eres, and vive. These are all verbs that we've been working with for a while or new verbs, okay? Then the next question is what do you notice after the verb? Well, this first one's a bit tricky, so we'll actually talk about it last, but you might notice that right after the verb we have subject. You're going to highlight that in a different color, please. If you want to follow along with me, it's pink. So, for example, habla la mamá a la profesora. Now, when we talk about subject, what we're talking about is who is performing the action, who is verbing. In this case, the mother is talking to the teacher, so the mother is verbing. In this case, you are tall, or we're finding out if you are, so you is verbing, okay? Make sure, for example, down here, there's a difference between tú, you, and tú, your. If you haven't gotten that down by now, you need to write a big note to yourself to remember that, okay? Now let's look at the first one. The first one's tricky. The first one is a really good example of how word order can be a little bit flexible in Spanish. So, you're going to have comes, our verb is coming first. Now I could say, comes tu pizza para el desayuno? Or I could say, comes pizza para el desayuno tu? I've got a little bit of flexibility there. So I could leave it here or I could place it directly after the verb. It doesn't really matter. This extra information can go neck with the verb wherever you feel comfortable, okay? What's important is that the verb comes first, okay? That's the really important part. So the word order we can identify from this pattern is that we have our verb first, then our subject. That's how we compose a yes or no question, all right? So now, 
how do you answer a yes or no question? Well, we know the answer can only be yes or no. So we have to start with yes or no, right? Did you do your homework? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. So, oh, sorry, went a little ahead of myself. So what I would like you to do with these next questions is, uh, if you're feeling confident, go ahead and answer them. If you're feeling like you need to take some baby steps, perfect. Highlight the verb and the subject in each one. It will really help you answer the question. Also, you always want to have this handy if you haven't learned it yet, okay? So, if you need to, now's a great time to pause to highlight, okay? If you're done highlighting, let's go ahead and play. So this should look something like this, vives tu in Spokane, etc. I'm not going to read them all. You'll notice the fourth one does not have a subject, but we know our subject is optional. So I know that I can tell that it's tu because of the verb form. Recibes only goes with tu, okay? Now, looking at these, we're going to want to answer these. So the first thing we're going to do is exactly, we're going to go si o no. So do you live in Spokane? Well, we all live in Spokane or Spokane County. So we're going to start off with C. Then you need to have your verb. If it's in the do form, we better change it to the yo form. Do you live in Spokane? Yes, I live in Spokane. Okay. Do the same for the next one. And go ahead and pause me now or use them as models to check your answers. Okay. You decide what is best for you. What you will notice is there should be a delay here, and I apologize for that. And every time you do this, you're answering the question, si sí o no. If you do a negative one, like down here, there's two. You'll notice it's no, she does not. So the first no answers the question. The second no actually negates it. It's like a not. Okay? So check that out. Check your answers. You'll notice that in the question and in our answers, we never use do. So I don't say, do you live in Spokane? I just say, you live in Spokane? And so the only difference here between a statement, you live in Spokane, and a question is punctuation. If it were spoken, the only difference would be uh, pronunciation. Vives tu en Spokane? Or, vives tu en Spokane? Okay. And again, we have some flexibility with word order. As far as this information here, I could say, vives en Spokane tu? and I could put the two on the end if I wanted to do that, okay? So make sure this looks right to you. If you're a little confused, rewind, watch it again. And let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna look now at open-ended questions, okay? Open-ended questions get a little bit trickier, but if you break them down, they're really not that difficult. So what we will notice is that they always start with an interrogative. It's an interrogative. An interrogative is a question word. So in my classroom, I have the big seven posted on the wall, okay? You should know them by now, even if you're not paying attention, you probably look at them when you daydream, okay? You've got to know your question words in order to be able to answer questions, right? That makes sense. So if you don't know them, you need to get to know them. So what I would like you to do, if you haven't done so already, look at my notes here, is you have those sample questions, and I would like you to highlight in a, your third color, highlight the question words, okay? And then, in the next slide, we'll look at answering them. But the characteristic of open-ended questions is that the answer can be almost anything as long as it satisfies the interrogative. So what do I mean by that? We've got these sample questions. They each have a question word or question phrase. So, if in the first one, maybe you just uh, highlighted donde. That's okay. De donde would be a better way. Or maybe you just highlighted cuantos. That's okay. But the question phrase is cuantos años. So just remember that that's asking one thing together. Okay? The next thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and highlight the verbs in the same color you used on the other side. So if you use yellow, use yellow again. And finally, highlight the subject. And what you'll notice is a nice little pattern. You've got the interrogative or question word. You have a verb here, and then you have a subject. De donde eres tu, right? From where are you? We don't use this word order in English, but we're not speaking English, so we need to kind of forget about that, okay? It doesn't make very much sense to our brains if we keep trying to think, well, in English it sounds like. 
It doesn't matter what it sounds like in English. It matters is what it is in Spanish, okay? So, this is the word order you need to use for these open-ended questions. You'll notice it's pretty much the same as a yes or no question. We've just added that open ending. And that's why the answer can be pretty open, okay? So let's look at how to answer them. If you don't know your question words, now's a really good time to pause me and fill out the question word definitions on your sheet, okay? So now that we can identify all of our question words, let's look at how to answer them. Well, what you'll notice is you have these questions for you, and these are actually really similar to the yes or no questions. I've just made them open-ended. So instead of, do you live in Spokane, the question is, where do you live? Okay? So what you'll notice is that, again, we have our question word, we have our verb, and we have our subject. Like the previous page, you'll notice there's no subject on this, but I can tell by context that tu is verbing. Okay? Now here we go. I'm going to answer the question. Well, if I say, where you live, you. Well, I know the question's about do. I'm going to go over to my handy dandy chart, answer about yo. And I'm going to say, I live in Spokane. And what that looks like is every part of my question has a buddy in the answer. You've heard me say that before. So I've got a subject in there. I've got a verb. And I'm satisfying the interrogative. That's so important. If you're not answering the question, what's the point, right? If I'm like, hey, how was the movie? And you're like, I go movie. Well, that's super. How was it? Okay, so we want to make sure we're always really ans answering the question or satisfying the interrogative, okay? So check your answers. They should be something similar to these, all right? And what I'd like you to do also is highlight the pieces of each one so that you show that you can identify the subject, the verb, and the interrogative. You'll notice here, for example, in La Escuela, that's extra information. I haven't really put it under the category of anything. That's fine. Okay? Oh, and number three has a small error. Well, it could be a correct, ella no come una ensalada, but it makes more sense to just say, ella come una ensalada. But your, your answer should be the same as this, with the exception of satisfying the interrogative. So you might say, instead of yo vivo in Spokane, you might say yo vivo in Spokane Valley. Or yo vivo in, I don't know, okay, Colbert or Mead, okay? So, or what you received for your birthday. So, after you've checked your answers, let's go to wrapping it up. We've learned two types of questions. We've learned the C O N O questions and our open-ended questions. So, we asked ourselves, what type of question is it? Si o no, or open-ended. Based on this answer, what should the word order look like? Do you need an interrogative? That's what this is asking. Okay? And remember that verbs come in first, okay? The verbs the most important thing. We can often leave off the subject. And then finally, who should be verbing? So, you're going to use your little question chart or logic to answer that question. So I hope this was helpful. Make sure you fill out and highlight all the parts of your guided notes and we'll come back together and have a conversation about it, okay? Sounds good. See you next time, bye.